Uh, very good here. Good, Richard. So three minutes over, I'll give you one more minute for the people who are about to crack this, about to finish this. Okay, let's yeah, let's invite everybody now to guess it. If you have not been able to solve it, I would request. Uh, I think four of you have responded. Three of you, please uh, put forth your response. I think just two of you, I guess. Uh, Mansha and uh, who else? Yeah, Ruchesh, Shami, Pratham. It's just Mansha. We are waiting for Mansha. Mancha, take a guess if you're not able to solve it. Put it on the chat box. Mancha, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Give a response on the chat box so that we can start the discussion for the same. Sir, I've already replied in the poll. You put it in the chat box also. Okay. Okay, good. So everybody has responded. All of you leaving Tripan have said B. Okay, let's check whether B was correct or not. See, very simple. First of all, we are aware that the equation of a chord whose midpoint is given is T equal to S1. Okay, so let's say I want to find out the locus of the midpoint of this chord. So I am assuming the, look, the midpoint to be H comma K. So T, as you all know, is nothing but X, X1 by a square plus y, y1 by b square is equal to, or you can say minus 1 is equal to s1. s1 will be h square by a square, k square by b square minus 1. There's no point writing minus 1 because minus 1 is going to get cancelled from both the sides. Okay. So this is the equation of this chord AB. So this is the equation of the chord AB. Now this is under the assumption that h comma k is the midpoint. Okay. Now, we all know that if the chords, uh, if the tangents drawn at the uh, you know, end of a chord meet at 90 degree, that means this C must lie on, on the director circle. Okay, director circle is the locus of all such points from where tangents drawn to a particular conic are at right angles to each other. Okay, so for such a conic, the equation of the director circle is given to be this. Okay. So can I do one thing? Can I assume that the point C is, now this is your R square. This is treated like R square. So let C be R cos theta comma R sin theta. That means I can assume C coordinates to be this cos theta, this sin theta. Okay. So in light of this, if I have to find out what is the equation of this chord of contact drawn from C, now I'll use the equation of chord of contact. Chord of contact equation is T equal to zero. So chord of contact will come out to be, chord of contact will come out to be X under root of A square plus B square cos theta by A square plus Y under root of A square plus B square sine theta by B square equal to one. Now ideally both of them represent the same equation. Both of them will represent the same equation. So now you can start comparing their coefficients. So if you compare their coefficients, so let's say I take this coefficient, divide by the coefficient of this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm missing out on anything. You will get a square b square uh, cos theta by h is equal to under root of a square b square sin theta by k. And on this side, on the other side, <laughs> you will end up getting uh, a square b square by a square k square plus b square h square. Okay. So I've done this mental calculation over here. I hope things are on the right track. 
Now try to eliminate theta here. So if you do that, your cos theta will come out to be, from here your cos theta will come out to be h times a square b square by under root of a square plus b square times uh, b square h square a square k square and sin theta will come out to be a square b square k by same thing under root a square plus b square times b square h square a square k square. Now we know the very famous Pythagorean identity that cos square theta plus sine square theta has to be a one. Okay. So if you do square of this and square of this and equate it to one, this is what you should be seeing and correct me if I'm wrong. You should be seeing a to the power four, b to the power four. Uh, and you will, in fact, the, this thing you can call it as, as a lambda. So let, let me write it like this. So you will have lambda s square plus k square is equal to one. Okay. So lambda square will be a to the power four, b to the power four. This is nothing but x square plus y square. And on the other side, you will have a square plus b square. And you can call this back to, back to x and y. Okay. So whichever option says it, that option would be the correct option. And I think that clearly matches with, oh, by the way, there's a square here also. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So that clearly matches with option number B. Anybody who did it in a shorter way? Or you took some special values of A and B and started working on it? Anybody who did that? Camdred? Sure, bro. We can assume a chord whose um, head point is uh, a, a by 2 come on p by 2 so e even the endpoints of that chord will be perpendicular to each other the tangents are drawn from the, the See, whatever region. point you are assuming make sure the tangents drawn there will meet on the director circle okay yes sir. yes sir it, it does so if you can assume that point then you can directly put it in the equation itself and check Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the next question. I hope everybody was clear about it. Well done. I think most of you got this right. Second question. Uh, this is from, I think, pair of straight lines, I think. Again, uh, we'll have around three and a half minutes for this. Put your response in the chat box. Question is, if the pair of lines given by x square plus 2xy plus ay square equal to 0 and ax square plus 2xy plus y square equal to 0 have exactly one line in common, then the joint equation of the other two lines is which of the following? Guys, there was a uh, assignment practice uh, sheet shared with you on Saturday. Uh, I hope you're done with it. Some of you are still doing it. No worries. You can take today's time to complete it. But I've shared one more with you and that is supposed to be done by 8th end of the day. Please take these sheets very, very seriously and solve them within time bound manner. That's the only way to success in J advance.
so at the end of the class please do do let me know what was the status of the sheet which was shared i think ruchir wanted some more time others do let me know Okay, Mansa, very good. Mansa, Mansha, Mansha. You take some time for me to get that pronunciation correct because we we had a student Mansa for two years, so so that the pronunciation is still left in me. Guys. <laughs> time is going to be over in next 30 seconds so i would request you to put forth your response so i have received it from mansha and tripan Excellent. Very good. Yes, Pratham, Ruchir, Shamik. Okay. Shamik is left. Okay. So other than Shamik, everybody has gone again with B. Let's check whether B was correct or not. All right. Now both. Both these lines basically are homogeneous equations, right? Suggesting that the components or the lines which make these will be the ones which pass through the origin. So let this be the common line. Okay. So let this be the line in common. Okay. So when you put y as mx over here, you will get one plus two m plus a m square equal to zero. Basically, I'm cancelling out x square so that I can save my time. Please don't write unnecessary things in the exam because just wastage of time. Okay. Now from here, I would like to see these are two quadratics in m square. Either you can use a direct formula or your direct, uh, you know, uh, understanding of the fact that these two quadratics in m have exactly one root in common. Read the question. They are saying exactly one root in common. Okay. Or you could eliminate m square. So how would I solve this? I would just you know eliminate m square. Let's say I multiply this with an uh, uh, this with an <coughs> a, okay. So let me let me multiply this with an a and subtract it. So when I subtract it, I get a square minus one uh, plus two m a minus one is equal to zero. Okay. Now this leads to a plus one plus two m is equal to zero because a cannot be one, right? Because if a is one, this will no longer have this y square term in it. Now here, your m becomes negative of a plus one by two, right? Let me make this back to your original expression. Now let's do one thing. Uh, from here, I can say a is two uh, m negative two m minus one. Okay, put it here. Put it here. I'll get negative two m minus one plus m square is equal to zero. Okay, plus two m is was also there. So two m minus two m will get cancelled off, giving you m as plus minus one. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if m is plus minus one, what will be the value of a? So if m is one, a value will be. Uh, a value will be. Minus three, and if m is minus one, 
a value will be one. But if a becomes one, both these equations will become same. That means they will have. Uh, but yeah, they will become a perfect square, correct? But in that case, we will treat this as if there are two coincident roots and both are same. So we will rule this condition out. We will take this condition into account. Even though I understand, uh, you would be saying that it becomes a perfect square having only one root m. But in that case, we can basically say that there are two coincident roots of minus one and both are common, right? So both the both the set of lines will become common in that case. So this is ruled out. Any question regarding why uh, this condition was ruled out? No, all well. Okay. So now when a is minus three, a is minus three. Let us look into these lines. So x square plus two x y minus three y square. <coughs> How would this get factorized into? Can I factorize this? Yes, of course we can. X square plus three x y plus x y. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think minus x y minus three y square. So you can take x common x plus three y. Take minus y common x plus three y. So basically, you'll have x minus y times x minus three y equal to three. Okay. Similarly, if I look into the other equation, so x plus three. Oh my, so my bad. X plus three. Yeah. If I look into the other expression, we have uh, negative three x square plus two x y plus y square. Again, this can be factorized as plus three x y minus x y plus y square equal to zero. Take three uh, x common. I take minus three x common. So it's x minus y. Take minus y common. X minus y. So you'll have three x plus y times x minus y equal to zero. So x minus y is the common line for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a line for make up a line using these two. So you get y plus three x times three uh, y plus x equal to zero. This clearly gives you three y square. Uh, this will give you nine plus one ten x y. And three x square equal to zero. So any option which says this should be your right option. Let us figure out which option says it. Oh, I can clearly see B is the option which works. So. Any other shorter route to do it? Please discuss for the benefit of all the students. Anybody who got a shorter way to do it? Sir, I did it using the sum and product of two. Then it's easier to find the common. Sorry, sir. So can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. So I did it using the sum and product of roots. I took alpha, beta, and alpha, gamma. Okay. So then, then it becomes easy in one step. You can multiply two. You get alpha directly. Then you can factor. Okay. Beta. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, so let's take another one. Question number three. <clears throat> the question says, equation of the circle for which the straight lines given by this are normals, and the size is just sufficient so that it contains the circle. Okay. Uh, this looks to be an easy question, so I will not give you more than three minutes for this. The time starts now, and put forth your response on the chat box to me.
ओके शॉमिक ओके मंशा लास्ट मिनट दिस इज नॉट अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन बाय एनी स्टैंडर्ड सो यू शुड बी एबल टू आंसर इट इन अ शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन ऑफ टाइम ओके रुचिर वेटिंग फॉर त्रिपन हिया एंड प्रथम ओके नो प्रॉब्लम रुचिर सो रुचिर पारिक है ज्वाइन इन बोर्ड प्रैक्टिकल वॉज इट द एक्चुअल बोर्ड प्रैक्टिकल और जस्ट अ मॉक 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 ओके ओके हिया प्रथम एंड त्रिपन ओके सो सम ऑफ यू हैव सेट सी सम ऑफ यू हैव सेट डी ओके लेट्स चेक सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स फाइंड आउट व्हाट आर द कंपोनेंट लाइंस इन्वॉल्व ओवर हियर so x square plus 3y plus xy plus 3x right uh if i take if i take these two together and these two together i get x x plus 3 okay and i take y x plus 3 equal to 0 so i get x plus y times x plus 3 equal to 0 which implies that the two component lines which are normal are this now please note normal means they are passing through the center of the circle okay so one is a line which is x plus 3 so basically it's a vertical line okay and another is a line x plus y so that would be a line like this okay anyways so i come to know that the center has to lie at the intersection of these two which is clearly negative 3 comma 3 okay Let me put over here negative three comma three. Okay, no doubt in finding the center. Okay, now whichever option you think gives you the center as negative three comma three, that is going to be the answer. So B and D are anyways ruled out immediately. Okay. Second is it must contain this circle. Now this circle itself has a center at. Um, Minus one comma three, so minus one comma three means it is on the same level as this, so somewhere over here. So minus one comma three, and if you see the radius, the radius would be under root of one plus nine minus nine, correct? Which is one. So let's say it is a circle of this nature. Okay, just sufficient to contain it. So when this circle itself has a radius of one, this has to have a radius more than that. which clearly indicates that c would be your answer but anyways if you want to solve it properly this has to be 2 and this is 1 so it has to have a radius of 3 thereby indicating that this should be 9 and hence c is anyways the correct option so people who went for d option two of you what mistake you made should i name the people Trippan and Pratham, careless mistakes. Careless mistakes is the last thing you should be doing doing in a JEE advance exam. Okay, next question. The question is: Locus of a point P. 
three normals drawn from which on the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax are such that two of them make complementary angles with the x axis so it's a concept based on co normal points on parabola you have to give me the locus of p uh roughly 3 and a half to 4 minutes is what we can i can give you for this question and give me a response on the chat box response from anybody so far uh let me give you one more minute okay very good man sir mancha oh my god what is what is wrong with me <laughs> sorry mancha mancha guys back up back up last 30 seconds okay ruchir okay tripan okay so uh so tripan wants to change his answer to okay ruchir saying okay okay so i'm getting a mixed kind of response all the options have been touched upon by you guys a b c d all of them okay now all of you listen to this well this is a concept which you may have forgotten even though it was done in the class so co normal points are basically those points right from where if you draw normals they will be concurrent at a point or so as to say that if i choose a point okay from there i can draw now i'm not saying all of them will be real right there may be one real and two imaginary there may be three real also so these points 
these points a b c d such that the normal drawn at them meet at a point they are called conormal points okay now one of the very important properties of conormal point is if let's say this parabola this normal has a slope of m1 this normal has a slope of m2 and this normal has a slope of m3 then the sum of their slopes is zero now why we'll we'll try to understand it first of all when does a line y equal to mx plus c becomes a normal to the parabola y square is equal to 4ax what is the condition for normality what is the condition for normality anybody knows it i forgotten it c is equal to negative 2am by minus am cube yes c is equal to negative 2am minus am cube very good tripan tripan remember that so now if you see this this normal has to be satisfied by the point h comma k so you have in place of y i put a k in place of x i put an h which clearly leads to a cubic polynomial in m something like this okay now this doesn't have an m square term so there is no m square term which clearly indicates that the sum of the roots must be zero and what are the roots here the roots here are m1 m2 m3 the ones which i have shown you in the diagram okay so cubic equation means there can be three possible uh, normals drawn from a point onto a parabola now i'm not claiming that all of them would be real two of them may be imaginary one of them may be real or three of them may be real so that really brings to this fact so this is very important if you remember it you really save a lot of time okay you really save a lot of time in the exam now coming to the question the question says two of them make complementary angles with the x axis okay so let us say let us say if m1 is the slope of the other okay and let's say this is tan of theta then m2 is actually tan of 90 minus theta okay let's say and m3 b m3 which clearly means m2 is uh, 1 by m1 so this relation is anyways known to us apart from the fact that m1 m2 plus m3 is equal to 0 okay now let us try to get the locus of the point p here which is h comma k okay now i'm explaining and doing everything so it may take a little bit time so don't think that this process is lengthy because normally i would i would not do all these things in my exam i will directly come to the final uh, this expression and this expression apart from that we can uh, see from this equation that product of roots two at a time so m1 m2 m2 m3 m3 m1 minus bc by that should be equal to 2a minus h by a correct so here i can do one simple activity uh, i can replace m2 with i can replace m2 with 1 by m1 okay so this will become a one anyways and i can take m3 common from here i'll get m1 plus 1 by m1 is equal to 2a minus h by a minus 1 which actually becomes a minus h by a, a minus h by a. okay anyways then second equation i can write is the product of the root is product of the root is going to be minus k by a. so product of the root is m1 m2 m3 is equal to minus k by a, which clearly leaves with m3 being equal to minus k by a okay now all of us let us try to understand from here from this equation i can say m1 plus 1 by m1 is actually negative m3 so this guy here i can replace with negative m3 so negative m3 square is equal to a minus h by a and from here i have m3 is minus k by a so i'll put this here okay so that will leave me with negative of k by a the whole square is equal to a minus h by a now this is going to be your locus let us try to simplify this so on simplification this gives you uh, k square is equal to uh, 
uh, a to minus sign, I'll flip the h and a position, okay? Which means y square is equal to a x minus a. So whichever option says this, that would be your option. So y square is equal to a x minus a. Y square is equal to a x minus a is clearly option number C. And C was only given by Trippan and Mancha. Others who made a mistake, I hope there is a lot of learning hidden in this question. Locus. Locus is simply a concept which is loved by J main exams. Oh, sorry, J advanced exams. So ensure that you are well versed in your art of finding locus. It's an art actually, I would say that. Because you know the process. Well done, Mansha and Tripan. Can we now move on to the next question? I hope you know your mistakes now. Okay. All right. Time for the next one. Tangents to the hyperbola drawn from the point alpha, comma, beta are inclined at an angle of theta and, and phi to the x-axis. If tan theta into tan phi is 2, and the hyperbola is 3x square minus 2y square is equal to 6, which of the option do you think is correct? Put forth your response on the chat box. This is a very easy question. Should not take you more than three and a half minutes, max to max. Okay, Pratham, very good.
ओके त्रिपन ओके रुचिर आर वेटिंग फॉर द रेस्ट फोर ऑफ यू रुचिर सिंह बाय द वे रुचिर पारिक वेटिंग फॉर योर आंसर मंशा शॉमिक एंड हिया ओके मंशा Okay, Shomik. Here, what's your response? Okay. Now, uh, basically, it's a case of pair of tangents, right? So, there's a hyperbola from a point. Okay, Rujit. So, from a point alpha comma beta, you are drawing a pair of tangents. Okay. Okay. And basically, let's say these are the slopes of these two tangents. The question is basically saying that m1, m2 is equal to two. Okay. So first of all, what is the equation of a pair of tangents drawn from an external point to the hyperbola? It is t square is equal to ss1. Okay. This is the equation of pair of tangents. Okay. So now this will normally give you a general second degree equation like this. A x square, b y square, two h x y plus two g x plus two f y plus c equal to zero. Correct. Now, if let's say this corresponds to a pair of straight lines, okay. Now, what gives you the product of the tangents? Now, please note that the product of the tangents information is hidden in is hidden in a and b, right? So it's actually your a by b. This everybody knows, correct? All of you know. So basically, if you write your y as m x plus c, okay, you would realize that a would be like your constant term, and this would be like your m square term. So we know that in a quadratic expression like this, which will be coming out in terms of m, the product of the slope is constant by the coefficient of m square, which is a by b in this case, right? So now we have to figure out this a and b from this guy t square is equal to s s one, correct? So what is t square? What is going to be t square? So t square is going to be three alpha x minus two beta y minus six. Okay. So square of this will be t square. What is s s one? S s one will be three. X square minus two y square minus six into three alpha square minus two beta square minus six. Okay. So from here, I need to just pull out the ratio of the coefficient of x square by the coefficient of y square. Now you don't have to expand it to get that coefficient. You can directly get it if you basically, I know, segregate out the coefficient. So what will be the coefficient of x square? Coefficient of x square will be three into this. By the way, this is the constant term, right? So it'll be three into this, and from here I will get minus nine alpha square. Okay. Why? What is the coefficient of y square? Coefficient of y square will be minus two into this, and from here I will get minus four beta square. This ratio is given to us as two in the question. Because m1, m2 is given to us as two in the question. So from here we have to find out the relationship between alpha and beta. So let's try to simplify this. By the way, uh, nine alpha square, nine alpha square will get cancelled off. So I'll be getting minus six beta square minus eighteen upon uh, plus four beta square and minus four beta square will get cancelled off. So I'll get minus six alpha square plus twelve. Okay. Uh, by the way, six also we can remove from here. Minus beta square minus three by minus alpha square plus two. Take it to the other side. Minus two alpha square plus four is minus beta square minus three. So that gives you beta square as uh, two alpha square minus seven. I think I have seen this option. 
Yeah, that's option number B. Option number B. Let me check who all gave B as the answer. Oh, 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 just Tripan, Pratham, Ruchir, and Mancha. So, Shomik, Hia, and Ruchir Parik. Where did you go wrong? Where did you go wrong? I hope you're clear where you went wrong. Okay, so do all your mistakes here only. Don't, don't do this mistake in your JE advanced exam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My teacher always used to say there is always a element of misfortune and bad luck in quota of everybody. It's better you exhaust that quota before the exam. <laughs> So whatever is the misfortune, whatever is the bad luck, do it when the stakes are low. Okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, we'll move on to some multiple choice questions. Okay, so let's take a multiple option correct question. Sir, we can take point slope form and then use condition of tangency. It comes out faster. I have it. Okay, good. More than one options are correct here. Please ensure you have marked all the options. So from common sense, only A or B could be correct. Both of them cannot be, or both of them could be wrong also. But A and B together cannot be correct. C and D, of course, they're all different things. So let's figure it out.
Okay, Mansha. Guys, one more minute I can give you for this. Last 30 seconds. Okay, here. Okay. So, Mansha, Pratham, and here have responded. Others, four of you. Guys, please buck up. Or if you're not able to solve, you have to take a guess. Because already three to four minutes have been given for this question. Ruchers, both Ruchers. Okay. So, I'm getting uh, one, one person is, okay. Ruchir Singh has only given one option. Okay, so most of you have said BCD. Mansha has said AC and Ruchir has just Ruchir Singh has just said an A. See guys, first of all, the centroid, this is very easy to figure out because we know that orthocenter, centroid, and circumcenter lie on a line which we call as the, the Euler's line, right? And the centroid divides orthocenter and circumcenter in the ratio of 2 is to 1. Correct. So if this is 3 comma 4, this is 1 comma 2. It's very easy to figure out what is the centroid coordinate. So that's 2 into 1. Uh, 2 into 1, 3 into uh, 1 will give you a 5. 5 divided by 3. And 2 into 2, 4. 4 plus 4, 8. 8 divided by 3. So that means C has to be pakka pakka correct. Okay. In fact, all of you have uh, marked C. So there is no uh, problem with that. Next thing is, I don't know how many of you realize this fact that the mirror image of the orthocenter about this line PQ will actually lie on the circumcenter. Now, I can easily prove this. This is very simple. See, basically what I'm trying to say is that what I'm trying to say is that this angle and this angle are same. That means these two distances are also same. Now, how it is same? Very simple. If you look at this arc, arc h dash q it basically subtends this angle over here which is actually 90 degree minus c and if this is 90 degree minus c then this angle must also be 90 degree minus c angle subtended on the same arc are equal second thing is if you see this is 90 degree and if this is angle c then this also has to be 90 degree minus c so these two angles are same hence let me call this as m and PHM and PH dash M are congruent. Okay. So, can I get H dash by taking the mirror image of H about PQ? Now, if you recall, we had done a formula for finding the mirror image of any point about a line. If you have forgotten that formula, I'll just take one minute to quickly recap that. So, let's say if alpha beta is a point, and there is a given line to you, AX plus BY plus C equal to zero. And you want to know what's the mirror image. Okay. So let's say mirror image is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, let's say XY. Okay. Let's say call it as XY. 
no, let me not, not call it XY, let me call it as PQ. Okay. So let's say PQ is the mirror image of the object alpha beta about the line AX plus BY plus C equal to zero. Then the formula that we know is, what is the formula? P minus alpha by A is equal to Q minus beta by B is equal to negative two. Negative two. A alpha B beta C by A square plus B square. Okay. So this is a direct formula for finding the mirror image. By the way, just to remind you, what is the foot of the perpendicular? For that, you just drop this two. I hope you remember these formulas. We have been using it time and again and frequently to solve questions. So from our given situation, let us try to find out what is the mirror image of the ortho center, which will happen to lie on the circum circle. Okay. So this is three comma four. So let me call this point as uh, P comma Q. So I'll use the formula over here. Uh, P minus three by A. Uh, A if I'm not mistaken is one. Correct. And Q minus four by minus one will be equal to negative two times three minus four plus seven by A square plus B square, which is two. So from here, if you figure out the uh, values of P and Q, they will come out to be, this is 10 minus six, so minus six, and this will come out to be minus three. So P will come out to be minus three, and this will come out to be 10. So Q will come out to be 10. Okay, so this point is, minus 3 comma 10. Now this will clearly help you to get the radius. So for radius, it will be uh, 4 square plus 8 square under root. 4 square plus 8 square under root. Which is 16 plus 64 under root, which is root 80. So it is obvious that option number A has to be correct. So B will be wrong and D will be wrong. So option A and C are correct. And the only person to get this right is Mancha. Well done, Mancha. Very good. Now, did you guys need more time to do it? Was that the case? Because I am not very happy with the way you have responded in this question. Just one person getting it right. Ah, Ruchir Singh, guess kyu karna pad raha hai? Kya ho gaya? You saying? I wasn't able to do it in time. So, what do All right. If a variable tangent to the circle x square plus y square equal to one intersects the ellipse at point P and Q, then the locus of the point of intersection of tangent at P and Q is. Okay. What is this question? Okay, is a parabola. Okay, <laughs> I was thinking, where is the equation? Okay, it's a parabola with lattice sectum 4. It's a parabola with focus as 2 comma 3. It's an ellipse with eccentricity root 3 by 2. And it's an ellipse with eccentricity greater than half. Chalo. Okay, this is, I think, more than one option correct again. So please solve this. 3 to 4 minutes is what I can give you. I think not. it should not take you that much time. Give me a response on the chat box.
Very good, Man Mansha. Yeah, it's very obvious that if C will be correct, then D has to be correct. But vice versa need not be. Okay, Shamik, very good. Guys, last minute. Good, Tripan. Good, Pratham, very good. Richard Singh, uh, Richard Parik, and here. Richard Singh also. Both the Richards and here, we are waiting for you. Okay, let's discuss. So, uh, it's very obvious that let's say there is a tangent to this circle and let's say I call the tangent as x cos theta y sin theta equal to 1. Okay. You can treat this uh, tangent to be the chord of contact generated by this point of intersection h comma k. Okay, so treat it as if you have drawn a pair of tangents from this point h comma k and this uh, variable tangent to the circle behaves like the chord of contact. Okay, so we know that the equation of the chord of contact is t equal to zero, so it will be h x then it will be 2yk equal to 4. Now both these equations are same as per our question. Both these equations are same as per our question. So I can say cos theta by h is equal to sin theta by 2k is equal to 1 by 4. In other words, you eliminate theta from here by using the fact that cos theta is h by 4, sin theta is k by 2. So Using the fact that cos square plus sine square is going to be 1. It's very simple. h square by 16, k square by 4 is equal to 1. Which means x square by 16, y square by 4 is equal to 1. So this is clearly an ellipse. Okay. And a is more than b. So eccentricity will be under root of 1 minus b square by a square. Which is under root of 3 by 2 in this case. Very, very clearly. Which means option number c is correct. And because C is correct, D is also correct. So C and D are the only right options. Everybody got this right. Well done. So without much waste of time, we'll move on to the next question.
Okay, so here is a question. Equation of a line that touches the curve y is equal to x mod x and x square plus y minus 2 the whole square equal to 4 is Yes, uh, any success for anybody? Okay, Mancha. Now, I don't know whether it's a single correct or more than one. You have to figure out. Richard, I think a simple construction of the entire situation will tell you how many answers should be there. So, I've got a response from Mansha, Hia and Richard Parik so far. And all of them have given only one correct option. One correct answer. Okay, Shamik. Only one, okay. Okay, Pratham. Uh, we are just waiting for Tripan. Tripan. 
Okay, so Tripan gives two options. Okay, fine. So let's discuss the situation. So we all know that this guy, <coughs> x mod x, is basically x square when x is positive and negative x square when x is negative. Okay. Uh, if I just have to sketch it, it is just going to be uh, two parabolas, one opening upward, another opening downward, other half opening downward. Okay. And there happens to be a circle whose center is at 0 comma 2 and radius is also 2. So there is a circle which is like this. Uh, let me use my tools. Okay. Now it is very obvious from this diagram that there could be two tangents possible. One would be like this. Okay. And the other could be like this. Okay. Now, let's try to figure that out. What is going to be the answer for this? So, I think there should be two, uh, two answers coming out. Let's try to verify it. If I take the case where x is positive, that means I consider y is equal to x square and this circle. Okay. Now, we know that for y equal to x square, What is the condition for tangency? What is the condition for tangency for x square is equal to 4ay? So when I say y is equal to mx plus c is a tangent to this kind of a parabola, what is the relationship between m, c and a? Who will tell me? Who will tell me? What is the relation? C is equal to minus AM square. Absolutely correct. Okay. So now, <clears throat> in this case, your A happens to be one fourth. So C should be minus one fourth M square. Right? In other words, you are claiming that Y minus MX plus one fourth M square is a tangent to the parabola, of course, and also to the circle. It's a tangent to the circle. So you can use the condition that if something is a tangent to the circle, that means the distance of the center from the tangent must be equal to the radius of the circle. Correct. So the center here is 0, 2. Okay. So when I put that, I get 2. This is 0 plus 1 fourth m square mod upon under root of 1 plus m square. This should be equal to 2. Okay, let's try to solve for it. So let's write it as okay. On expansion, this will give you four. This will give you one six m to the power four plus m square is equal to four plus four m square. Okay, I hope I am not missing out on anything. Do let me know if I am missing out on anything. So, uh, this will give me uh, 1 by 16 m to the power 4 as 3 m squared. Now, m is 0, that is less likely. Okay. So, m squared, I am going to cancel from both the sides because I acknowledge the fact that m cannot be 0. So, m squared is equal to 48. So, m happens to be 4 root 3. Okay. Plus minus 4 root 3. So, uh, 4 root 3, I can at least see over here. Let's try to verify with the constant part. If the constant part is fine, we can go ahead. So y minus 4 root 3x plus 1 fourth of m square. m square is 48. 48 by 4 is 12. So that clearly matches with option number B. So B, let me check again. B, yes, B is the right option. So anybody who has marked with B is definitely correct. Now, this is half the problem done because I speculate that there cannot, there can be another tangent to the other arm, which is y is equal to negative x square arm. Okay. Now let me repeat the process. So when you have x square is equal to minus 4ay and you have a tangent y equal to mx plus c to it, what is the condition of tangency? 
What is the condition for tangency? C is equal to am square. Okay. So y minus mx minus uh, here again your a is one fourth. Okay. Again, using the same fact that the distance of the center from the tangent should be equal to the radius. So 0 comma 2 will give me something like this. Mod is equal to 2 under root 1 plus m square. Again, squaring it will give me 4, 1 16th m square minus m square is 4 plus 4 m square. 4, 4 getting cancelled. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this will, be, this will be giving you this equal to 5 m square. So m is equal to plus minus root 80. Okay, so root 80 is like uh, 4 root 5. Okay, so 4 root 5 I can see sitting in my options. Okay, and 4 root 5. Now, why not minus 4 root 5? Can it be minus 4 root 5? No, because here, you are considering that your tangent, Achha, let me ask you this question. We have two answers coming out. One is 4 root 5, another is minus 4 root 5. Okay. Only one of them is possible. Which one of them is possible and why? Why? Yes, in the third quadrant, if I'm making any tangent, it has to have a positive slope. Why? Because dy by dx is minus 2x and you are in the third quadrant, so your x is a negative quantity. So your slope has to be positive. So you cannot have minus 4 by root 5. So whichever option says minus 4 by root 5, that anyways would be ruled out. So C and D will be ruled out, but I have some hope with A. So let us try to figure out. So this guy will be y minus 4 root 5x minus 1 fourth of 80, which is going to be, I think, 20. So 4 root 5x plus 20 is going to be the answer. So option number A is definitely correct. So A and B are the right options. The only person to get this right is Tripan. I mean, get this completely right. Okay. So a quick recap of our condition of tangency for our standard parabola case. So let's now move on to the next question. this question. Okay, so we'll take this one. It's a paragraph based question. I hope uh, this figure is large enough for you to read it. Uh, as of now, I'm interested only in the 19th answer. So please solve the 19th one. So the question is, there's an ellipse whose semi-major axis is of length 2, semi-minor is of length 1. It is slipping between the coordinate axes in the first quadrant while maintaining contact with both x and the y axis. What is the locus of the center of the ellipse? What is the locus of the center of the ellipse? This is a one minute question, but I can give you two minutes if you want. That's correct. Oh, sorry. I should not say that. Okay, Pratham, very good. 
So Pratham has given the answer. As I told you, it's a very simple question. Should be solved within one minute. Good, Tripan. Okay, Ruchir. Ruchir Singh. Okay, Shamik. Ruchir Parik, Mansa, Mansha, very good. Who is left? Hia is left, I guess. Hia? Okay, so most of you have gone with D for dog. Okay. See here, we, we must all understand that these are your coordinate axes are like tangents to this ellipse, and because they are meeting at right angle. Basically, origin must lie on the director circle. Okay. Now, one thing is very interesting about director circle, and you would be knowing it also. Basically, if you have an ellipse, okay, x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to one. I just give take an example of this ellipse. Okay, so this ellipse, let's say, has the center at origin. Okay. Now, let's say this is your director circle. Okay. Now, if I start rotating this ellipse, will it change the equation of the director circle without changing the origin, uh, without changing the center? So, let's say if I start rotating this ellipse about the center, will it start giving you different director circle or director circle will remain the same? Absolutely, Pratham. Director circle will remain the same. So, director circle of an ellipse basically depends upon the A and B values and the position of the center. That's it. Okay. So if the center is at some point h comma k, then the equation of the director circle will be simply this. That's it. Okay. Whether the ellipse is rotating or not, it doesn't make any difference provided it maintains the same center and it maintains the same value of a and b. The director circle equation is not going to get changed. Okay. Now, if you see here, in this case, our center is changing. But we know for the fact that the director circle here, this point always lies on the director circle. Correct? So, wherever is the center, the distance of the center from alpha comma beta must always be under root of a square plus b square. Okay? So, this clearly brings to the fact that under root of alpha square plus beta square should be under root of a square plus b square, which is in this case two square and one square respectively. So alpha square plus beta square has to be five. And if you generalize this, the locus of the center has to be option number D. Okay. But my main our uh, aim is, our main ambition uh, for you guys is to solve the question number 20. So now I would request you to put your response for question number 20.
ओके प्रसन्न वेरी गुड मनसा मनशा वेरी गुड सो थ्री ऑफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी रिस्पॉन्डेड विद द सेम ऑप्शन सो लुक्स टू बी करेक्ट ओके त्रिपन हैज आल्सो रिस्पॉन्डेड विद द सेम ऑप्शन रुचिर सिंह आल्सो विद द सेम ऑप्शन ऑसम आई होप यू आर नॉट कम्युनिकेटिंग अमंग ईच अदर ओके हु इज लेफ्ट I think Hia is left out. Hia and Shomik Nag. Okay, so only Hia is left now. Hia, we are waiting for you. okay so everybody has said b so i think it requires no discussion this this discuss it anyways so first of all if the ordinate of the center is 1 the abscissa has to be 2 correct because alpha square plus beta square has to be equal to 5 so if ordinate is 1 okay then this has to be a 2 okay now what is the question the question is a ray of light passing through the origin and the center of the ellipse that means passing through the origin so let's say this is 0 0 and this is uh, uh, 2 comma 1 so there is a ray of light passing through it okay what this ray does it hits the tangent at the vertex of this parabola now if you look at this parabola it is basically y minus 5 the whole square if i am not mistaken and you will have um you will have negative 4 x 25 and you have to have a minus 10 okay now remember if you have any case of a shifted parabola like this plus minus 4 ax okay the vertex tangent the tangent at the vertex is always obtained by tangent at the vertex is always obtained by putting capital x equal to 0 okay so if you remember i had basically discussed this with you when i was telling you the the very general equation of any parabola so when you say y y is actually nothing but the distance of the square of the distance from the axis square of the distance of the point on the curve or the parabola from the axis okay and this 4a basically represents the length of the lattice rectum the length of the lattice rectum and this x basically represents the distance from the distance of the point from the tangent at the vertex okay so when you equate this to zero you directly get the equation of the tangent at the vertex so tangent at the vertex is x equal to 10 here so what is happening there is a line x equal to 10 so there has to be a vertical line so let me just sketch it so there is a vertical line x equal to 10 now what happens this ray hits here 
and goes back and cuts the y axis somewhere okay so let's say this is your y axis i go y axis okay so this is your y axis so where does it cut the y axis that is what we need to figure out right so how will you figure this out how will you figure this out first of all this line is y is equal to x by 2 okay yes or no correct okay so this point here is your 10 comma 5 point right so from the symmetry of the figure we can say that we can say that this angle and this angle are the same correct so if this jump what is this jump this jump is of 5 correct so this will also be 5 correct yes or no because it is an isosceles triangle so you have to jump 10 to reach this point so you will be re reaching the point 0 comma 10 where the reflected ray will hit the y axis so option b is definitely going to be correct is that fine most of you got this right well done so i was expecting that also so let's move on to the next question this is a column match in fact you already know the instructions so there's no point showing you the instructions now give your response together don't be like a is matching to let's say r and then you wait for some time to see b option so give everything together okay so whatever is do you think is matching to a b c d write all of them together and then press and enter okay don't give your answer in bits and pieces because if you answer one then other person will answer in between so i will lose track on uh, what you had actually answered actually that list part was needed only for this question ah uh, tripan sorry i lost uh, touch which question you were referring to the previous one 
ओके ओके दिया ओके नो इश्यूज शुड वी डिस्कस इट नाउ आर यू ऑल रेडी I got only response from here so far. Okay. 
ओके प्रथम गुलशेर पारिक गुड वॉट अबाउट अदर्स मंशा रुचिर सिंह शॉमिक त्रिपन okay enough time has been given so those who want to guess you can very well guess it so i am giving you an option to guess in case you have not been able to solve okay take an intelligent guess then we'll take it forward from there so i think we are just meeting for mansha who is not in the call so we'll move ahead so let's take this forward see the length of the focal cord if you remember we had done that the length of the focal cord is 4a cosecant square alpha where alpha is the angle that it makes with the x axis so if you have any kind of a focal cord okay and let's say it makes an angle alpha then the length of the focal cord let me call it as uh, pq is given by this expression correct now as per the question they are in, it is inclined at an angle of pi by 3 so length of the focal cord is 4a is 1 and cosec square pi by 3 will be 2 by root 3 the whole square okay that's nothing but uh, 16 upon 3 okay so length of the focal cord inclined at an angle is l so this is l so they want to find out 9l by 16 so 3l by 16 is 1 So nine l by sixteen is going to be three for sure. Okay, so it is greater than only p and q. Okay, so a will match to p and q. A will match to p and q. Right? Let me check who all gave the answer for a as p and q. So Pratham gave Ruchir. Parik, I do not know why you've mentioned everything. Shomik gave. Ruchir Singh has not replied anything. Yeah, Ruchir Parik, I'm talking about. Oh, this is a nine sixteen by eleven. Okay. Next one, the number of normals that can be drawn from this point to the parabola y square is equal to four x. Now we know that. Y equal to m x minus two a m minus a m cube is the normal equation, right? And since you're claiming that this normal should pass through six comma four, and a is one actually, so I'll just put the values. So this is going to be four six m minus two m minus m cube. So this results into m cube minus four m plus four equal to zero. Now everything depends upon how many roots this guy has. How many roots this guy has? So how will you figure this out? How will you figure out how many roots does this particular equation have? Application of derivatives. We have done this concept in application of derivatives. Correct. So what we do is first we differentiate this, right? And we see that the roots of this equation comes out to be plus minus two by root three, right? Now, if this particular equation has two roots, alpha and beta, let's say, so this quadratic has two roots, alpha and beta, and let's say I call f of m as 
एम क्यू माइनस फोर एम प्लस फोर नाउ इफ इट इज अचुएशन वेयर द ग्राफ जस्ट टेक्स ए टर्न एंड गोज अप अगेन राइट देन यू वुड रियलाइज दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ एफ ऑफ अल्फा एंड एफ ऑफ बीटा विल बोथ बी पॉजिटिव करेक्ट ये सो नो so let us try to check that first so uh, 2 by root 3 if i use i'll get 2 by root 3 cube minus 4 into 2 by root 3 plus 4 uh, what does it indicate about this value this is almost 8 by 3 root 3 minus 8 by root 3 plus 4 uh, this seems to be clearly a positive value is it a positive value seems to be positive yeah yes sir because root 3 uh if you do 8 divided by root 3 it is uh, roughly going to be 4.6 okay negative 4.6 okay and this is going to be uh roughly going to be 1.53 okay so this is positive similarly if i put minus 2 root 3 whole cube and of course this is going to be plus 8 by root 3 plus 4 this is again going to be a positive that means this graph is not going to have more than one real root that's the only real root it's going to have the other two will be imaginary so the answer to this question is the number of normals that you can draw is only one so option b will match to p b will match to p Oh 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 oh! Nobody has matched B to oh Ruchir Parikh has matched B to P. Okay, correct. Rest nobody I think has matched B to P. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Me, tell me. Yeah, you also. Sir, sure, in a yes, yeah, sir. Uh, sir, in a parabola, if the line isn't on the axis of the parabola, doesn't that mean it? And it's on the exterior of the parabola. Doesn't it mean uh, it can have only one normal on the parabola? Yeah, I, you can say from the diagrammatic point of view also. But I'm coming from a mathematical point of view. Okay. You are. Yes. I mean, what you are doing is you're, you're trying to look at the uh, the the sketch of the diagram and trying to figure out how many normals. Yes. But I'm mm -hmm. I'm being doubly sure by confirming it with the equation. Okay. Sir. Yes. Sir. The number of points where a ray of light parallel to the axis strikes the interior of the parabola. Okay, this is this seems to be a weird question, but it's very simple, I I guess. So, oh, oh sorry. So, if your ray of light comes like this, of course, it's going to pass through the focus, and any point focus will become parallel to this. So, basically, it only will cut at two points. So, option number C will match to Q. there is no other okay so next the area of the triangle formed by the pair of tangents from 0 comma 2 and the chord of contact okay let's figure that out as well yeah so chord of contact equation will be t equal to 0 So t equal to zero means y into two is equal to four uh, x plus zero by two. So y is equal to x is the equation of the chord of contact. Chord of contact. Okay. And let me just draw the figure. Zero comma two will be here. This will be here. Okay. Now try to understand here. If you see a situation like this, okay, where this is y equal to x, and these are your pair of tangents. Okay. yeah so we have to find the area of this triangle
any shorter way to get this? So you can find the perpendicular distance on that base also. Uh, okay, can, can I first figure out the point Q here will be uh, where y and x values are equal. So x value will be 4. So this is 4 comma 4 point. Okay. And this guy has to be origin. So you know the four points, uh, sorry, you know the three points of the triangle. Correct? Yes or no? Ruchi saying, uh, Ruchi Parikhi was saying something. So you can take the perpendicular from 0, 2 on to y equal to x. Okay. So we take a perpendicular and that value will be 2 by root 2. Correct? Into half into base. Base here will be 4 root 2. So root 2, root 2, 2, 2, gone. Answer is 4. So that matches with S. So D matches with S. So the answer, full and final answer to this question is A matches to P and Q. B matches to P. C matches to Q. And D matches to S. Is there anybody who got all this combination right? Uh, I think nobody got this right. Nobody could get this right. So why is C Q sir? Why is C to Q? The number of points where the ray of light parallel to the, will strike the interior is two points only, no? I showed you here. Here and here it will strike. So, but it never said it reflects. So. <laughs> it strikes the interior of a parabolic reflector, actually, they want to say. So, okay. can we take the axis also? It'll be just one point. P and Q. No, the axis is not a part of the parabola. So, but that's also a ray of light parallel to axis. No, that is not parallel to it. That is coincident with it. <laughs> then, but sometimes they'll do something like that and then give off answer. Then. <laughs> In that position, these two points will become coincident at the vertex. Okay. Anyways, this, this may be a, a controversial question also. I can understand your dilemma. But let's try to solve it by the most, you can say, um, the common feeling that everybody will get, not by a very special feeling. Sir, I had a doubt in the previous question. Can you go? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Sorry. Uh, yeah, tell me. Sir, in that, uh, I think the B part where they asked about the, not that right. point. Sir, Shaumik was saying that if it is not on the axis, then it has to be only one for normal, sir. I didn't understand what that meant. Can you explain? See, he's coming from a diagrammatic point of view. He's saying that if the point is somewhere over here, then there will be one real normal. That's what he's... No, he, I think he's, he was trying to say if it is outside the uh, parabola, there will be... Yes, sir, the That's what he was trying to say. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Understood, sir. All right, so another column match. Column match is equivalent to solving four questions. So I think definitely it'll take time. So I'll give you around eight minutes, seven to eight minutes to do this. Put all your responses together.
yes guys uh, any response okay so i have got for mansha very good mansha uh last 30 seconds if you want to guess your answers you can do that so i think 8 uh, minutes are over almost okay ruchir saying anybody else guess it if you are not really able to solve it guess it so that we can discuss and we can you know save our time and learn the process okay pratham chomik tripan kiya take a guess okay let's discuss see guys uh, let's look at the a part of the question it says that these three lines are concurrent the condition for concurrency is this determinant should be equal to 0 correct so if you simplify this what will you get so let's simplify this so one uh, we'll have uh, two minus minus three which is five then we have negative two two a minus three b and then we have a negative one minus a minus b this should be equal to zero so on simplification this will give you a uh, minus three a plus seven b Plus five, correct? This is equal to zero. Yes or no? Now they are asking you, what is the least distance of the origin from a comma b? So they are asking you, what is the least value of this? Okay. Now see here. Try to imagine that there is a plane, or there is a line, for that matter. Okay. Whose equation is this? okay and there happens to be a point on this line correct so what is the least distance of origin from this point is basically trying to ask you what is the least distance of origin from this line negative 3x plus 7y plus 5 equal to 0 which is happens to be the perpendicular distance correct so perpendicular distance the least value will be 5 by under root of 9 plus 49, which is root 58. Okay, so s root 58 has to be equal to 5. So the first option will a will match with q. So if your a is matching with q, absolutely correct with respect to a. Well done. i think most of you matched a with q only anybody who didn't do that uh i think pratham they uh, did not match it who else mostly everybody who answered matched a with q next is a and b are two fixed points on a line okay so let's say there's a line a and b are two fixed points on it let the locus of a point v says that pa by pb is 2 now pa by pb is 2 now all of you try to understand here if there is a point which moves in such a way 
that P is to P B is a value which is a number not equal to one. Then basically P will lie on a circle. Okay, and that circle, most of you know the name for it also. That circle is called the Aplonius circle. Okay, this Aplonius circle has a characteristic that it will cut the line joining A and B at such points. Uh, let me use M and N, such that M is to AM is to MB is two is to one, correct? And AN is to NB is also two is to one. That means this is a case where M and N are harmonic conjugates of each other. I'm sure you would have heard of this name, harmonic conjugates. Harmonic conjugates are nothing but they are two points which divide the join of two points in the same ratio, but one internally, another externally. Are you getting my point? So M will divide AB internally. So this will be an internal divisor. Okay, internally in the ratio two is to one. And this guy will divide externally in the ratio two is to one. Okay, and this will be a circle. Now, let us re read the question completely what they're asking us. So they're saying that PA is to PB be a curve cutting L at R and S. Okay, so they're calling this as R and S. So I'll change their name, nothing in the name. So they're saying the slope of PR is minus half. The slope of PR is minus half. Okay, so this has a slope of minus half. What is the slope of PS? Now you know for sure that this is going to be 90 degrees. So this has to be negative reciprocal of that. So answer is two. So B will match to R. B will match to R. Anybody who gave R as the answer? B will match to R. Tripan gave B as R. Shomik gave B as R. Ruchir gave. Mansha gave. Very good. Everybody was on right track. Awesome, guys. Next. Let tangents at P and Q to a curve this intersect at T. Okay, good. If 2 comma 1 is a point such that SP into QS is 16, then the length of ST is less than. Okay. Now, if you see this curve, uh, it is basically Y minus 1 the whole square is equal to, I think, 4X minus 1. Okay. Now, this has got A value as 1. It's a shifted case. It's basically a shifted case of a parabola where this parabola has been shifted one unit to right. Oh, sorry. One unit to the right and one unit up. Okay. So where does the focus come for this? So the focus will come at a point two comma one. So S is actually the focus of this particular parabola. Okay. Now, what is the question saying? Let tangents at P and Q to the curve intersect at T. Okay, so let's say this is P and this is Q. The tangents intersect at T. Okay. All right. Now, everybody, please pay attention. Everybody, please pay attention. Just a second. Now, all of you, please uh, just try to recall in case of a standard parabola, if you were drawing, drawing, let's say y square is equal to 4ax, let's say this is your parameter t1, this is your parameter t2. If I draw a tangent at t1 and I draw a tangent at t2, okay, what is the coordinate of this point of intersection of this two? Now, if you recall, this coordinate was Goa. Remember, I, I gave you a formula Goa, correct? Now, what is the distance of this point? Let me call this as P, let me call this as Q, and let me call this as T. What is the distance of Goa from the focus? Now, you would realize that the distance ST is nothing but 
a t1 t2 minus 1 the whole square plus a t1 plus t2 the whole square under root this boils down to under root of 1 plus t1 square 1 plus t2 square okay now this result should be known to you actually because this leads to a plus a t1 square into a plus a t2 square now if you look at the situation very closely you would realize that sp distance is a plus a t1 square and sq distance is a plus a t2 square so your st is nothing but under root of sp into sq okay this is something that a serious j aspirant should know now coming back to the question we already know even if it is a case of a shifted nothing changes because you know shifting is happening uh, for all the points so it's not going to change the relation so sp into sq is 16 so st is going to be under root of sp into sq which is going to be 4 now they are asking you this option is less than which of the following i think it is less than a uh, q so c will match to q it is less than t so q t is the answer for option number c q t q t q t q t brochure parik has mentioned q t mansa has not mentioned q t rochir singh has mentioned q t shomik just t okay so be careful i think shomik you missed out marking q last part of the question any questions here anybody till a b c does anybody have any concerns do highlight so does the uh, like length from like product of tangents for like circle as s1 does it work for other conic circles as well under root of s1 uh, not under root because different length but the product as just s1 product of what the product of the two tangents as uh, s1 i i didn't get that if you are drawing a tangent two tangents to a circle the length of the product of these two is s1 that's what you're saying yes yeah. so can you do that for any conic ah uh, no 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 i don't think so it will work for any other conic okay okay sir now let the double ordinate p and p dash of this hyperbola is produced both sides to meet asymptotes at q and q dash what is the product of pq into pq dash okay so let me just make this diagram quickly so let's say this is your hyperbola okay let's let's take an any double ordinate like this okay and let's say we extend it forward so that it cuts the asymptotes Uh, by the way this is a very crooked line i'll just make it a proper okay so let's say this is your p and p dash and it cuts the asymptote at q and q dash they are asking you what is pq into pq dash now if i were you i will just take a uh, case where my double ordinate is a lattice rectum okay so i know that this point is going to be uh, by the way uh, if i take our normal hyperbola then this asymptote is y is equal to b by x and this asymptote is y is equal to minus b by x correct and let's say this is my line x is equal to a okay passing through the focus so now this point point p is actually a comma b by or oh, sorry a comma b square by a, okay and this point q if i'm not mistaken it is a comma and if i put a over here it will become b so the distance pq is going to be b e minus b square by a. similarly the distance pq dash is going to be b e plus b b square by a. 
So they're asking you what is the product of these two. So the product will be b square e square minus b to the power four a square. Uh, but I have to use my uh, formula. We know that e square is going to be, or you can write it like this: uh, b square by a square is one plus e square. Oh, sorry, e square minus one. E square minus one. So I'm going to write this guy as minus b square times e square minus one. So this. Results into b square. That means the answer here is actually a fixed value. Okay, b square. So we'll see what is the b square for this hyperbola. The b square for this hyperbola is clearly pi minus one. So d will match to s. By the way, this is true even for any other point you take. Okay, if you take a double ordinate at any point. I have taken a very special case of a double ordinate, which happens to be the lattice vector. But even if you take any other point, PQ into PQ dash will always be the square of the semi-conjugate axis. This relation will always be true. However, many people do not know this result because it is not a very useful, I would say, uh, commonly seen uh, result. So, in case such a thing comes, you may we, you may have to spend some time deriving it out. But again, if you want to keep this in mind. You can very well do that. So your option D will match to S. D will match to S. Anybody who has, oh, everybody has matched D to S. Very good. Probably because it looks like very similar to the given expression. <laughs> but if I were a smart question setter, I would have made these values resemble these normal numbers. Okay, so that the students get confused. Can I move on? Oh, sorry. sorry, sorry. Can I move on? I think this was a very beautiful question. I, we learned a lot of subs. Let's take some integer type questions also. If this circle bisects the circumference of this circle, then what is c plus d by 10? Uh, two minutes for this, not more than that. Okay, Pratham, very good. Anybody else? Very good, Mansa, Ruchir Parikh, Ruchir Singh. Waiting for Tripal, Shomik, Kia. Okay, Kia, very good. Okay, now let's say, let's discuss it. Uh, Shomik, you want to answer? Okay, 
So other than Shomik, everybody has answered with five. Tripan has answered three. Okay. See, if the white circle bisects the circumference of the blue circle, it is very obvious that the common chord will actually be the diameter of the blue circle. So this common chord will happen to be the diameter of the blue circle. So common chord equation is s minus s double dash equal to zero. So just subtract these two equations, you'll get the equation of the common chord, which is in this case six x uh, plus fourteen y. Okay. Now, if this is the diameter, it must also contain the point which is the center of the circle, which happens to be one comma minus four. So one comma minus four should pass through it. So six minus fifty six plus c plus d is equal to zero. So c plus d is fifty. So the answer is loud and clear. C plus d by five has to be sorry. C plus d by ten has to be a five. Tripan and Shomik, kio cheese thala. Shomik, are you still guessing? I didn't have enough time. Ah, what happened, Shomik? I didn't have enough time, sir. I, I, I was too. If the normal to this hyperbola at a point T meets the curve again at T dash, what is mod of T cube into T dash? So I think tomorrow you have a physics session, correct? Tomorrow you'll have a physics class with Dira sir. Okay, Rupan, Vishal Parik. Shomik seems to like this number four. <laughs> okay, Shomik. What about Hia, Pancha? to sing patham <clears throat> oh 
Okay, I'll give you I'll give you last thirty seconds to wrap this up. So those are just one minute. Okay, Mansa. Okay, Mansa. Normal to a rectangular hyperbola equation. Kisi ko yad to hoga nahi. <laughs> so half a minute will go in deriving that. Okay, Mansa. Okay. See, guys, this is the equation of a normal at any point t for a rectangular hyperbola. Okay. Now you may derive this also in the exam. You may remember it, but again, this is up to you how much pressure you can take of remembering. So I'm not uh, putting any pressure on anybody to remember things. Okay. In case you end up remembering it, well and good. If no, you can derive it also. You know how to find the equation of tangents in normal at any point to occur. We have done application of derivatives. Okay. Now this uh, normal is also satisfied by c t dash comma c by t dash. Okay. By the way, we we normally assume a point on this hyperbola to be c t comma c by t. That we are, everybody knows about. It. Okay. So now this should also satisfy this curve, right? So this will leave you with c t dash t cube minus c t by t dash is equal to C t to the power four minus one. Okay, C C C you can remove from everywhere. So this will give you t dash square t cube minus t is equal to t dash t to the power four minus t dash. Now from such situation, always t minus t dash will always come out to be a factor. Always come out as a factor. Why? Why? Because it is very obvious that the normal drawn at the point will also meet the curve at the same point. So the equation will give you all possible scenarios. So t minus t dash will always come out as a factor, which you can see very clearly over here if you bring this term to this side and this term to this side. So you'll have t dash square t cube minus t dash t to the power four s t minus t dash. And here, if you take a t cube t dash common. You will get t dash minus t is equal to t minus t dash. That means t dash t cube is equal to negative one because t cannot be t dash. So mod of this is going to be mod of this quantity, which is going to be one, and that's what the question setter has asked. It was supposed to be just a one minute, one and a half minutes question for a person who remembers the equation of a normal to a rectangular hyperbola at any parametric point or at any generic point. Okay. given two circles okay let the radius of the third circle which is tangent to the two given circles and to their common diameter is 2p minus 1 by t find the value of p so let's have 3 to 4 minutes to solve this and please give your response on the chat box
Yes, any success, anybody? Very good, Mancha. So just one person, Mansha, has replied so far. What about others? Do you need more time? So one minute. One minute, okay. Okay, Richard Singh. Okay, so let's let's discuss this. If you want to take a guess, you can do that. I have got just two responses. It's almost around four and a half to five minutes gone. Okay, so Tripan has taken a call. Okay, Richard Parikh has taken a call. Gia has taken a call. Uh, Pratham and Shomik, if you're there, you can take a... Okay, Pratham also and Shomik also. So, uh, here if you realize that we are talking about this circle whose uh, radius happens to be minus 3 by uh, root 2, comma minus 3 by root 2. This happens to be the center. And the radius happens to be uh, 9 by 2 plus 9 by 2 under root which is actually a 3. Okay. And for the other circle, it is minus 5 by root 2 minus 5 by root 2. And the radius, let's say I call it capital R, that's going to be uh, 25 by 2 plus 25 by 2, that's going to be a 5. Okay. So given the position of the centers and and one more thing you will notice that they do not have any constant term. Constant term, absence of constant term indicates that your circle is actually passing through the origin. Okay. So one circle is clearly like this. Okay. Let me. Okay. And the other one is clearly like this. Okay. Both of them passing through the origin. Okay. And let's say this is their common diameter. So they talk about in the question about the common diameter. So let's say this is the common diameter. Okay. They also uh, seem to talk about a third circle, which is tangent to the two given circle as well as their common diameter. So let's say I assume that circle to be 
something of this nature. There you go. Okay. Touching the uh, yellow circle, touching the uh, white circle, and touching the common diameter. Fine. Okay. So far, so good. So let's say uh, this is the center of the bigger circle. This is the center of the smaller circle, and this is the center of our unknown circle. Now, let's say I connect these points. I connect these points. Now, let's say this. radius of this unknown circle is x okay let me name the centers also so that we can you know address them by that name so let me call the bigger circle center as o1 this is o2 and this as o3 okay now can i say all of you please listen to this statement of mine can i say o2 o3 square o2 o3 square is let me call this point as p for the time being okay can i say it is o3 p square plus the distance o2 p square can i say that yes or no and and O two p square is O one O two plus. Now see here. This distance I can write it as O one O three square minus O three p square under root. Correct. So basically, this is what is O two p square, and this is nothing but O two O three square. now i'm going to put our given expressions capital r small r and x so this is capital r this is small r so we are going to put that expression so o2 o3 square is capital r square oh sorry my bad this is uh, my mistake this is going to be small r plus x square this is small r plus x square okay o3p o3p is x square O one O two is R two minus small r R minus small r. So this is capital R minus small r. Okay, correct. This whole thing was capital R, and if you subtract small r, you will get O one O two. And this fellow here is nothing but O one O three. O one O three. O one O three is O one O three. O one O three. O one O three is capital R minus X. Yeah. So whole thing is capital R. Subtract this part X from it. Okay. Minus O three P square is X square. Let's try to simplify this further. So this will give me X square to R X, and this X square will get cancelled off from here. So you'll have R minus R. Plus under root of r minus x the whole square. Okay, now inside here also, if I open the brackets, I will end up getting. I will end up getting just capital R square minus two r x. Okay. Is it fine? Let's square this also. So r square plus 2 rx is equal to square of this will give you r minus r the whole square. R square minus 2 rx, and you'll end up getting two times r minus r under root of r square minus 2 rx. Okay, so this is going to be r square plus small r square minus 2 rr. 
and this is going to be r square minus 2rx plus 2r minus r under root of r square minus 2rx. Ooh, this expression seems to be quite a lengthy one. Okay, so I have to solve for x here. I have to solve for x here. Anything else that uh, can be uh, taken care of? So this is 2 R, uh, this is going to be plus 4 R, okay. And uh, this is going to be uh, 2 capital R square plus 2 R minus R under root of R minus Okay, seems to be an ugly figure. Okay, but let's try to uh, simplify things. Oh, one, one thing I can do here is that I can see here, I can see here some kind of, oh, yeah. Why did you write 4Rx? Wouldn't this be 2Rx that time? Okay. So before this, he had written 2r plus 4r. Okay. Uh, Once again, did I do a simplification error over here? Yeah, so this gives me 2rx and this gives me 2 capital R square minus 4rx plus 2 times r minus r under root of r square minus 2rx. Right? Correct? So I took this on the... Um, minus 2r small r minus 2rx so it would shift uh, so it should be uh, uh, minus 2r r plus x oh hi yes it's 2rr sorry for that so 2r square minus 2rr minus 2rx that's fine Shomik yes sir any questions here okay so Dropping the twos from everywhere. So this will lose a two. 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 Okay. Now R minus R X is equal to R R minus R here and R minus R under root of R square minus two R X. So clearly R minus R can be removed off from everywhere. Oh, this is going to be plus. Oh. Now it cannot be removed. Okay. Somehow it is becoming too lengthy. Or probably I should have put the values and you know, uh, simplified it. Okay, so I should have put the values. Uh, now if I have to make a correction, I have to make a correction right at this step. Uh, let me let me just put the values. I think that will make our life more easy. Rather than dealing with these values. Sorry about that. Uh, I could have put the values here. So in this case, our small r was 3. So 3 plus x the whole square. And this is going to be 2. This is going to be 5 minus x the whole square minus x square the whole square. Okay, so that will make things more easier. So x square and this is 2 plus under root of 25 uh, minus 10x. And this is 9 plus x square plus 6x. Okay. 
Okay, so 9 plus 6x is equal to 2 plus under root of 25 minus 10x the whole square. So 9 plus 6x will give us uh, 4 plus 25 minus 10x plus 4 under root of 25 minus 10x. So this will leave us 16x and I think minus 25. Sixteen x, thirty four. Oh, sorry, minus uh, minus twenty. Okay. Now drop the factor of four from everywhere. This will give you. Oh, sorry. This will give you. Okay something like this. Correct? So 16x square minus 40x plus 25 is equal to 25 minus 10x. So 16x square is equal to 30x. That is what we get. So x is equal to 30 by 16 which is 15 by 8. So now as per the question, 2p minus 1 by p is equal to 15 by 8. That means 16p minus 8 is equal to 15p. So p value is going to be 8. Okay. So if I had not wasted time, <laughs> here we could have done this problem well within 3 to 4 minutes. So the only person who got this right was Mansha. Rest all of you gave a different answer which was wrong. So p is equal to 8 is the answer to this. Okay. So uh, we'll stop the session over here. I would like to know from you.